Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Adrian. Um, thank you so much for joining me for our video today, which is Should I Read the Winnowing Flame Trilogy? This is by Jen Williams. It is a um, trilogy of books, um, starting with The Ninth Rain, followed by The Bitter Twins, and then The Poison Song. So as you may know, this is a fantasy series. It does take inspiration from multiple other genres in small ways. Um, there's a very slight steampunk vibe as you get further through the series. There's some sci-fi elements that come in as well. Um, and you may have seen my review for Ninth Rain. If you haven't, you can go check that out in the doobly-doo below. Um, but let's jump in. I'm going to try and give you uh, a few positives and a few negatives as to why you may or may not want to um, start this series. Um, as some of you will know, I really, really enjoyed this series. So my negatives may be... A little weak but I'm going to try and be as objective as is possible which is probably not very um, and try and think through why you might not love this series. So my first pro here um, is actually going to be a pro and a con so this is going to depend on you and what you like. Um, for me this is world building and this is a big pro. I really loved Jen Williams's world building. I think it is very interesting. I like how at the start of the series we um, get little bits of it. We are given it incrementally. Um, we understand a little bit of the world. Um, and by the end of the first book, we understand a bit more. By the end of the second book, we understand way more. Um, and then by book three, we're really getting a fully fleshed out universe um, in this world. And I think that's brilliant. What I will say though, and I said this in my Ninth Rain review, is that the world building feels very much a throw everything at it. It's like um, Jen Williams has taken um, a bunch of stuff that she's loved and she's thought has been really interesting in different series and different things she's read, even in different genres, and gone, oh, that's cool, I'll have that. That's cool, I'll have that. That's cool, I'll have that. And thrown them all in. Um, and for some people, that might be overkill. Um, that might be too much and it might be too confusing, too varied. Um, you might not think it's consistent enough um, to really hang together cohesively. Um, for me personally, I loved the variety. I thought it was brilliant. I think it was very um, interesting. I think it was very well done. And I actually think that as the series goes on, it does start to hang together more. Um, it starts to become a more cohesive whole in this world. Um, but if that's something you're not going to enjoy, book one is going to be difficult for you. Um, and I want you to go in knowing that. So if if that's not your thing, this might not be a series for you. They're not really, they're not super short books. They're going to take a bit of reading. And actually, if you really aren't going to like that approach to world building, then it might be a, too much of a slow starter for you to really uh, enjoy and to get into. So be aware the world building for me is a big pro, but for many is going to be a con. My second pro, my second positive is going to be character development and character growth. I really enjoy the character growth in this series. We are following a few main characters. It is multi-POV, um, quite considerably multi-POV, um, but I really love the character growth in the series, particularly of um, some of our main characters. So I think um, you'll see Vintage is a human who um, is ex off exploring the world. She's very scientific. She wants to understand what's going on. Um, she's quite in a quite a privileged position as a human. Um, Tor is one of the, um, he's basically sort of an elf stand-in um, in this world, um, the world that we're in. Um, Tor is very interesting. He's part of essentially a, a dying race, a race that is falling um, into, sort of into a descent. Um, it's dying off essentially. Um, it's on its last legs. And I really think Tor is portrayed very well. Um, I think he's a particularly interesting character. He's not the kind of character we often see um, from those dying civilizations. He really wants to escape it. He doesn't want to have to face it. He doesn't want to fix it. He just wants to uh, run away and and forget that it's happening and live his life and just, just get on with it and pretend it's nothing to do with him. And I find that a, quite a compelling character and I think his character arc is particularly compelling in that way. Um, it's not the, I need to fix things. I need to be a savior of my people. Um, and I think that's very interesting. And then as well as that, we follow Noon, who is part of a despised and feared 
um, subsection of human society. She has magical powers, which immediately um, makes her um, a terror for most people. They are terrified of the fell witches, and she is sort of immediately sold into, or not even sold, given up to the winnery, which is basically a big prison workhouse to basically to keep society safe from the fell witches. Um, so yeah, particularly interesting how she deals with um, captivity, how she deals with um, yeah her life, how she develops um, as someone who has been in captivity um, and who has been um, essentially a slave and how she deals with that throughout this series. Um, so I think that was very interesting as well. Character development here is a big pro for me. Um, as you see these characters move through the books, they really progress, they change, and they're very understandable. Uh, a lot of them are quite likeable, some of them not so much, but very understandable and relatable. So I'm a big fan of how Jen Williams does the character work here in this series. The second and probably final negative I'm going to give for this series is I do think it takes a slight dip in book two. Well, for me personally, anyway. Um, and that's not a dip in quality of writing. It's not a dip in quality of characters, but it is a dip in terms of the plot. It felt very side questy. It felt like we were almost in a little bit of a holding pattern, waiting for book three to resolve some things. Um, it did definitely feel like some of our characters were on a side quest um, that didn't have that much of an impact on the overall story. Now, and that is probably a particularly harsh viewpoint on it. I'm probably overstating this because I'm trying to find some negatives for this series. But book two definitely wasn't quite up to the quality of book one and three for me. It was just that lack of plot progression, that feeling of being in a holding pattern. Um, just did, man, it wasn't quite as exciting for me. It didn't feel as gripping. Um, it didn't pull me in in quite the same way. And now onto my final positive, and this is going to be the pros. I think Jen Williams is masterful with her pros. She's not um, overly flowery, she's no, nowhere near purple, um, but she's very uh, exact and precise, and I just enjoy it. It's very clear, um, almost understated prose, but it never gets in the way, um, but it's not super boring and repetitive either. It just walks this middle ground really well, where... It's not super noticeable, but occasionally a phrase will just hit you and you're like, oh, that's good. Um, but that's not all you're thinking about. You're not thinking about, wow, this is amazing prose. It's serving the story. And I really like that. I really like prose that serves the story um, without being over the top, without um, getting in the way and being too flashy. Um, but also, I don't want prose where it's repeating the same words over and over and over again. So I think um, the prose here is particularly good as well. So in conclusion, should you read the Winnowing Flame trilogy? Um, my answer generally is going to be yes. Um, I think it is brilliant. I really enjoyed it. I think the character development and character growth and just the writing of the characters is brilliant. I think the world is expansive and interesting. Um, and I believe that the prose is really high quality as well. However, if you hate books that suffer from middle book syndrome, um, you're gonna, you might struggle with The Bitter Twins as book two. I do think it has that slight dip. As well as that, if you want um, world building that is a bit more cohesive and concise straight from the off, um, you may struggle with Ninth Rain because it is a bit scattergun or certainly feels it at the start. There's a lot of different moving parts that feel pretty unrelated to one another in the world building. So if that is something that is going to confuse you or you're just not going to enjoy um, and you're going to have to fight your way through, it may not be for you. If neither of those negatives particularly put you off i think you should definitely jump in and start reading the ninth rain give it a go see how you get on if you love it you will love this series because it it, it it ends so well the poison song is as good as the ninth rain if not better bitter twins is good it is still solid we still get our characters we love and see their growth um but yeah i really think you should definitely give this a try um, and if you like Ninth Rain, keep going. It is absolutely, totally worth it. So there you go. Sorry that that was probably not the most objective should I read ever, but I hope that that gave you some understanding of the series, um, some understanding of what you'd be getting into, whether it might be for you or not. I hope if you do read the series that you absolutely love it. 
Um, if you like the video, click the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of my content. And otherwise, I will hopefully see you guys again soon.